I get to do it this week. Good job. Nice. You're giving Big Daddy a run for his money. I would I hope so. I would hope so. It's not the first time I've played before, but <laughs> yes, we're missing Big Daddy today. He's not feeling well. Welcome back, everybody, to our Lucy Goosey show about town. Uh, we've got Amanda, Leah, myself, Lee, and uh, yeah, we're we're flying kind of. You know, we haven't had him not here in quite a while, mm. and uh, yeah, it's nope. weird. It's kind of weird. I get to sit between these two lovely ladies, so he's uh, stuck with us. Uh, <laughs> that, that too depends what side of the coin you're looking at on that one. So, um, but again, like I say, welcome back, everybody. We uh, a beautiful Friday here in Acton. We're in Lee's garage. We're getting ready for a jam tonight, and probably another one on Sunday. So. Uh, we uh, love having all our jammers come out. It's, uh, it was a lot of fun last Friday. The weather wasn't so great, but today we got great weather. So I think we'll see lots of players out. Uh, we've uh, got lots to talk about as well. I haven't even looked at the news yet. Russ sent it to us. Thank God he was at least awake to do that. So hope you're feeling better, Big Daddy. You yeah, know, get better. Yes, we miss better. You. It's definitely weird uh, sitting in the middle. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> Definitely weird being on this side of the table. So uh, we're brought to you by Max Tires, 905-873-9255, North ah, yes. 61 Wall Street <laughs> in Georgetown. Um, hopefully you got your snows changed over by now, but I've still seen some people with snows on their cars. But uh, so what? Big deal. Not a big, big deal. Make an appointment, though, that's for sure. Do not just drop in uh, unless you're actually broken down and then might jump on it right away you never know smudge is always there and we always love to talk about smudge so but yeah we've got uh we're gonna have the three of us sitting here today so get used to it but we're gonna <laughs> jump to the gig guide amanda yes okay so the gig guide is brought to brought to us by halton women's place um this week not too bad this week uh we're announcing the georgetown highland games is coming saturday june 10th Admission is $20 for adults, seniors, students, $10. Children under 12 with an adult is free. Enjoy pipe bands, dance competitions, and so much more. I remember going to that as a kid, like the Highland Games. Oh, right I know. Oh, they're yeah. awesome. And then COVID hit oh. and it changed everything and it's it's good to see it back. It's I used really to, good to see it back. I used to be at Market Market Street and Park. I would just yeah. walk up a few blocks yeah. and I was in the park. Yeah. Yep. Growing no, up, a it lot was of, A lot of fun going to the Highland Games. I Our family went every year and, uh, you know, those guys doing those, that pole toss. Oh. Brutal. <laughs> All Man. power to you. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, so at Uncorked on Main, Dollhouse Drag Trivia Night coming June 20th. Get your tickets as soon as possible. They sell fast. Yes, they do, actually. Because like I said, I talked about the Red Harp when they did theirs. They were sold out in like less than two hours. Yeah, anytime Good. I've heard anything about these sort of things, they are popular, sold out shortly after they go on sale. So if you're wanting to go, well, get those tickets. It's a larger tickets. population than what actually fits into these bars, so <laughs> they want to make sure they get in. Well, there's yep. a, to the, uh, you got to remember, bars are trying to still come back. We still have an aspect of, of that, that the restaurants and, and bars and stuff like that are still trying to come back from the pandemic. Uh, doing shows because I know a lot of them are now doing like uh, trivia night as well the yep. karaoke is a little bit yep. more um, so yeah you know it, it get out and enjoy it's uh, the patio at some of these places is nice to be out at well the patio yep. now especially oh, right? Right. With this absolutely weather. enjoy the sun while you can the St. George would like everyone to know they are open on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. enjoy lunch with an ice cold beverage at the Appalachian, every Wednesday is acoustic open jam. Bring your voice or an instrument, or just sit back and enjoy listening to some of our local talent. And there is a lot of talented oh, people. Oh, God, yeah. Yes. We get them here in Lee's Garage as well. So. Nice. And bring a chair and a cooler if you like. Okay. Come and enjoy live music. We actually have somebody coming from Toronto. They messaged me on Facebook. Oh, wow. And said, my mother loves the live music she saw the videos that we had posted uh, a couple weeks ago and she's coming for a visit as well but she she said oh, i have to go to that lee's garage it's and he this guy Corey contacted me and said where is it you know doing friday nights I said, so hopefully we'll see you tonight nice okay 
Saturday, May 27th at 9 p.m. is Itchy and Scratchy Show, live classic rock. At great the band. Great band. You get a chance to see them? Great band. Uh, they can they play, again, one of those bands you can go uh, play some Aerosmith or play some Pink Floyd or play, and they'll play it. Wow. Oh, yeah, they're a great band. Yeah, that's nice when you can do that. When you yep. can do that, yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. they're a good band. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Tone dogs are a lot like that as well. So. Right. Okay. At the Red Harp in Acton, Acton City Limits with guest host Gary White. Saturday, June 10th, 1 to 5 p.m. Includes special guest guests. Jammers are welcome. And... What most people are waiting for, Georgetown Farmer's Market. Yes. Starting Saturday, June 3rd, is Georgetown Farmer's Market's 30th birthday. Oh, wow. Come and check out all of our local vendors. Let's make this year the best one yet. Yeah, it's good to see the Farmer's Market back. Uh, just to touch a bit on that, Acton's Farmer's Market goes Thursday afternoons from usually 4 till 7 p.m. Well, they've moved. They used to be in front of the town hall. Now they're going to Prospect Park. So, oh, wow, uh, nice. Just to let people know. And that's, I think, next week. They open that next yeah, week. Thursday, so. though. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, it's Thursday, Thursday afternoons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, they don't. It's, it's hard to compete with the Georgetown one on the Saturday. So to do Saturdays kind of, it's pointless, right? So, but uh, it grew really well last year. The BIA did a great job. Uh, that's why they have to move. They need more room, uh, which is a positive thing well so, it is so uh they're moving to prospect park people just so you know and uh, you can check that out thursday afternoons 4 to 7 p.m at the acton farmers Market. i think it'd be a nicer nice. place to be anyways for that personally there's a, there's a girl there i met her last year she drives all the way down here from barry oh wow it. i thought wow you I hope you sell a lot of stuff. That's a, <laughs> well, she must be doing okay she, if she keeps, yeah, if she keeps if she's coming. coming. She's got to yep. be doing something right. And but yeah, lots of great stuff at uh, our farmers markets, and uh, that's just uh, another sign of summer on the way. Right? Yes, very much so. And it's one of my favorite things to do in the summer is check out the farmers markets. Okay, food banks and bread baskets. Yes. Okay. All of our local food banks and bread baskets are both needing our help. So if you can, please pick up a food item. Uh, one of those prepackaged bags can be donated as well. Um, well, the other thing is, is that they also have like, cereal and there's, there's a yep. list. If you check the, the Georgetown uh, bread basket, uh, and I'm sure it, it pertains, I don't know, I haven't looked at the Acton one at this point, but they'll give you, they have a list of things that are most needed right now. They have recently been able to accumulate some of the foods, but unfortunately that's going to go just as quick as they got it. Yeah. So yes. please do um, check out what they need the most. Um, but of course, anything and everything, whether it be a cash donation, food, anything. Anything. Anything that will Anything help. can and help. like we've said in the past, most of the grocery stores in town have that box as you're going out the door yeah. drop something out of your cart just grab it out of your cart and drop it in there and you know what nothing else it's like the pay it forward kind of thing when somebody pays for your drink going through tim hortons and that it gives you Absolutely. that kind of warm fuzzy feeling you know down in the cockles of your soul and uh it, it's it's a good feeling why not yeah if everybody donates even one item it goes a long a way long, to help long way. Absolutely. Okay, and we are brought to you by Halton Women's Place. If you or anyone you know needs help getting out of a difficult situation, please reach out. The crisis lines are open 24 seven, including holidays. The Milton and Halton Hills number is 905-878-8555. Please, whether it's to a trusted friend, family member, colleague at work, or Halton Women's Place, please reach out. You're not alone. Absolutely. Totally agree. And it's a great organization. Watch out for their uh, walk in high heels. That's a great uh, time to donate. Are you going this and, year? And uh, I don't know. I, 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 um, 
You usually get contacted by now, and I haven't heard it. Well, so I, I saw I your pink shoes when I went in your house, yeah. so I, I, that's, I just thought yes. that. Yeah, I was practicing, so, you know. And I'm new, so I, I've got to see this. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> it's, it's a fun event, and, you know, it, it, I've been involved with it so many times. That just the people are just awesome. They're, they're, they're wonderful people, um, and a lot of volunteer-based things too so even if uh not so much somebody that uh you know in crisis if you want to volunteer for the for the um the shelter it, they're a great organization they can always use volunteers um and i highly recommend it so it's uh we've all witnessed or been a part of 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 uh domestic abuse yes and uh it's uh it's a, an ugly side of our world but if you can help, we greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. You want to say the phone number again, too, by the way, please? It is 905-878-8555. I have a question. Something that we always talk about, the women's home place, but men are also. There yes. are, it, it Absolutely. Does, the percentages aren't as high, but there are men. We should look into what there is well, available for men. But it's hard to do a percentage rate because men don't report it. No, no less than because they're weak then. Yes, yeah, right? even less than yes, women. But and uh, um, what I find is uh, what I think bothers me the most is um, they they don't. Yeah, you, you, I think you nailed it on the head, Leah. That you think you're weak because you're a woman's doing but this stuff men, to you but well the patriarchal too. society we've all been raised in unfortunately has embedded and instilled in the man, man's mind growing up that you're not a man if mm -hmm. you show emotion or you look for help very or, much so and Absolutely. when i said percentage i'm saying percentage known yeah. and, in and, terms of, well, of the shelters it, yeah. and, and yeah. whatnot yeah. But we should we should look into that yeah Absolutely. Actually, yeah, i think there's so a, there's a yeah, program both. at a guelph university that's awesome for men that are uh in that situation uh, you can go on the Guelph University website and check it out I've, I've spoken at a few of their conferences that's why I know about it and um, yeah definitely yeah but they're the closest one I know around that help men uh, in that situation uh, because it does happen it, it does, it, it, it's out there it's real and it is growing more and more you well I think we're seeing more and more domestic it's, violence even, all the way across like I think so I don't know that it's I mean, it's growing more, I guess, overall, but I think in some coming cases out with more. men, exactly. it's coming more out people, more, more yeah. men. Yep. Doing what I do in a healing industry, um, that's one of the things I see, and it brings me to tears when I see these retreats with men hugging and crying and letting it out yep. and doing these things just to help themselves, and it's just men. Yeah. Yep. You know, it is absolutely beyond beautiful. Anyways, we should probably get going. Yeah. We, on, uh, uh, on well, everything we're, not, here. we're not doing too bad time-wise, and considering we don't have to do a changeover right now either, so <laughs> again, we'll just keep on moving. But again, we want to uh, we want to big hugs out there to Big Daddy. So yes. you know, it's, it's we uh, miss again, you, it's weird uh, not being here. So, uh, but I, we're going to start up differently. We're going to start with you this time. Oh, I'm going to talk get, about. You, I get the sports. You get the top story. I get the sports. What sports? Right here, the Halton. Oh, that's the top one. No, I was going to. Okay. You do the sports, and, All right, I'll I'll do, do, and then we'll go that way. I'll do the sports. Sports so, is not my thing. Uh, yeah, because Big Daddy will be proud of this one for sure. We do a lot with the Bulldogs. We love the Bulldogs and our Raiders. We love those guys. Get out and support them. This is fun sports to go watch. Yeah. And the Bulldogs won th uh, three out of three this week, defeating Newmarket Saints Woo! on Saturday night, 10 to 5. They beat. West Durham 13 to 10 and took care of the Green Gales 8 to 5 and uh, we have a home and home with Brampton Excelsiors this weekend get out and support the Bulldogs like I said a fun team and lacrosse it's a fast sport too like it's well, you know it's, it's like hockey. even I, I I'm oh, a yeah. hockey baseball I'm not a football but I do enjoy watching you know lacrosse. if you can get out and, and check out a game I guarantee you're gonna love it. take the kids it's a lot of fun for the kids because the, the guys will come out too like at the end of the the game and they'll take pictures with the kids and do selfies and oh, autographs awesome. and all kinds of stuff so you get a chance go check it out at the Elcott Arena in Georgetown and go support the Bulldogs Yes. Go Bulldogs. So. So, this is an article that we have gotten from the IFP, the Independent Free Press. <laughs> this, this is a mosquito, and it's just We're, determined. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Get him, Leah. I thought you got him on that one. 
I did. The last one. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Police identify three victims and make multiple arrests following reports of shots fired at a residence on Winston Churchill Boulevard at approximately 10.30 p.m. on May 22nd. That was, I, I couldn't believe when I heard this. Yeah. I know. Upon arriving at the residence located north of Guelph Street in Georgetown, Halton Regional Police Service located a single male victim with gunshot wounds. He was transported to Brampton Civic Hospital. Police soon received another call for two males with gunshot wounds who are receiving treatment at the Georgetown Hospital. Officers concern, confirm all three men were injured in the same shooting incident and are in serious but stable condition. Shortly after the shooting, officers located a suspect vehicle and conducted a stop. At the time, four men were arrested and a firearm was seized by police. An additional five male suspects have since been arrested in wow. relation wow. to this shooting. This is, this I, is, this I, I, yeah, this is something you see in these Netflix movies. Like, what I know, going on in our know, I know. It, it makes me more and more oh. just keep saying, I want to go up north and get away from all this BS. And, uh -huh. oh, in the like, next month, yes, I am. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm here. I know. And it's just like, uh, it's, it's moving in. It's done. Yeah. It's moving in. Unfortunately. Yeah. That's, that's scary. But, you know, that comes with growth, I think, in a city. And, we're getting a lot of people from, you know, Mississauga, PO, all of that moving into this area now. And unfortunately, that seems to. You know, but it's it's happening everywhere. We're just not used to it. And nor are a lot of no. other places right well, yeah. now with what's playing out. Unfortunately, uh, very unstable out there with all of the predicaments that people are in financially and otherwise. So unfortunately, you with know. the way things are with food and rent, oh. housing, it's going to go up more and more. So how are we doing with the upper credit? Okay, upper credit? the upper credit Humane Society, which serves the Halton Hills area, has renewed its lease, Halton giving Hills. it a home for the next five years. Right Way to go. Yes. yes. Our fur buddies are being taken care of. Good Thank job. you. Good job. Good job. Okay. It's leased with the town of Erin for the building at the corner of Trafalgar, Trafalgar Road and Wellington Road 124 was set to expire on October 24th, 2024. The lease extension gives the UCHS an opportunity to continue to look for a new location. Five years, that's perfect. Yep. That keeps them going. And really, you know, other than it, 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 they had to move out of their, that site that they're on, you would just have to bulldoze it anyway, rebuild, it becomes a whole. So, you yeah. know what, leave them there. Um, like say, they're helping our fur babies. Yes, and they they're are. They're a great organization. Uh, we've done all kinds of work with them at uh, Halton Hills Online and Halton Hits. I've and, been a vendor uh, in some of their events yeah. that they hold in the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, yeah well, we go I DJ some it. of them and they were great and uh, just, you know, they're saving animals out there. And Angela's it's, still working with them kind of from a distance, but she's still uh, Well, she's the, down in the, the Niagara media. region doing it. And uh, yeah. oh, she still does a lot of promotion stuff. And, yeah. and Angela, hi, good to see you again. You know, good to see you always. Um, but yeah, just a great organization. Please donate as much as you can. Um, and it doesn't always have to be money. It can be your time, as we say, right? <laughs> Not done. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. You're put I'm not reading it. So. <laughs> the agreement between the town of Aaron and UCHS is a reflection of our shared values and commitment to making a positive impact in the community, said Aaron Mayor Michael Dane. We recognize the vital role that UCHS plays in promoting animal welfare and the new lease will help extend the important mission. UCHS Chair Lisa Petras, Pietras said the organization has informed the town about having difficulty finding a new location. She said the town came through for us by extending the lease. The property was originally leased to UCHS for 20 years in September 2001 and was later extended for an additional three years. 
The lease extension will allow UCHS to continue to look for a new location, as well as giving it time to create a marketing plan and raise funds. Amazing. It so, is. Glad we can help with that and put that word out there for sure. Because, uh, again, just a dynamite organization. And, and uh, you know, it's got to be tough for them because they they do have to sometimes use an eyes and stuff like that. And that's got to be really hard. I couldn't imagine. Oh. Well, when you know it could have been avoided, most definitely. Yes. That too, yeah. Yes, you know, it's, most it's, definitely. It's, it's, it's a challenging situation to be in. That, that I'm grateful I'm not in, for sure. But, uh, yeah. Well, it's Good job, Town of Erin. Everybody working together to save our pets. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, at the meeting uh, of the Halton District School Board, the public got some insight into the situation around bullying at local schools. Overall incidents of bullying as reported and investigated at schools slightly lower this year as opposed to last year, said Anthony Cordello, right. the Superintendent of Education School Services. However, there are increased numbers of incidents in South Oakville, South Burlington and communities that are on a rise and generally speaking in the municipalities of Oakville and Burlington, but there's a decline in Milton and Halton Hills. So Look that's at the sizes too though. Well that too you're I seeing. I mean Milton a lot has growth, grown right? rapid rapidly too. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. But Oakville Burlington are definitely uh, really, vast. really yes. getting saturated. Well it kills me when you see them build a school and then a year later they're putting up like sixteen portables. Well didn't you judge that <laughs> You were going to see a growth. Why didn't you build the school a little bigger? Like, hello. You would think, but yeah. Who no. knows what the reasons are? Is it cash? Is it who knows? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, who knows the the HCDSB, sorry, the letters are so small, uh, <laughs> has a system wide bullying prevention and inter intervention plan as well. The plan is multifaceted and includes education, prevention, and intervention programs and strategies. Uh, I think all school boards will have something like that on board. And you know, back when we were in school, bullying was part of it school. It was kind of normal. It was part yeah. Of school, well, really. it wasn't to the extent it is not, now, though. It's not. It, I don't feel for most it was as damaging. Not that it didn't do damage. Any bullying does. Yes. But was playing out now well, was now, not even comparable to yeah, what no. we had. Well, in now you've no. got the, the technological oh, end of it, of the cyberbullying, right? So, yep. uh, they can do it without even being confrontational about it. They can do it from afar. They and, don't have to show their face either. Yeah, you can yeah, sit yeah. behind a keyboard and yeah, do it. You know, so it, it's so. it's frustrating to watch. It's you know, and you want. I'm glad to watch. we didn't have it then. Phones and all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm oh, thankful God, yeah. for the. It's way psychological it was warfare up. now. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. So Peel police have arrested and charged four people following a kidnapping investigation in Brampton. The charges stem from an incident that took place on February the 15th at approximately 9:30 p.m. Oh my God! Here we go again. Yep. <laughs> Police alleged two victims in their early 20s attended a Brampton residence, were held against their will, and later released. On Thursday, May 18th, so just passed, at approximately 6 a.m., police searched two residences in Brampton and one in Georgetown. As a result of that investigation, police arrested eight people and seized a 9mm compact handgun, <laughs> ammunition, and vehicles. Police charged eight suspects at the Ontario Court of Justice on Thursday, May 18th, and they were held for a bail hearing. The charges were as follows. A 24-year-old from Brampton was charged with kidnapping, robbery, possession of a firearm, possession of a prohibited firearm, discharging a firearm, and assault with a weapon. A 28-year-old and a 22-year-old, both from Brampton, were charged and kidna with kidnapping and robbery and a 25 year old from Georgetown was charged with kidnapping, robbery, and a possession of a fi 25. Sorry, wow. I stopped for a minute and there. Kidnapping. Of a like, firearm. When you hear that, it's like that's another level. Like, that's, it is. Oh, that's like, a whole other that's, level. That's a whole different category. And there was also four people from Georgetown, aged 22, 21, 24, and 26. We're wow. each charged with one count of possession of a firearm. Yeah, wrap wow. your head around that. 25 years old and got a kidnapping. Now, to what degree, though? That's maybe, was it something, not that any kidnapping is simple, but you can't, you got to no. wonder, did they yeah. just take someone against their will and it was, that's the way it happened because they did something they shouldn't have? Or was this an out and out brutal because he did have robbery and possession of a firearm? Was it on yeah. the higher level of, well, that, that's you know, a, that's you, a, that's it's like insane. When, when you're hearing about carjackings, what? Yeah. What? what? Right in Walmart parking lot. Yeah, like, <laughs> so bizarre, you know. It's yeah, I, I don't know. I, it, it's 
I like say it just more and more is saying to me, you know, I, yeah, it was great to grow up here, and I love living here, and I'll be here for a while still. But, you know, it's do I <laughs> do I want to do I want to retire up north? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so I'm on my way there. I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yep. you are. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from Halton Hills today. A veteran in municipal legal matters is set to become the integrity commissioner for both Halton Hills and Halton region. Susan Craig has served in the role for a host of governing bodies, including the cities of Barrie, Vaughan, and the town of Gravenhurst and Huntsville, and various school boards. Halton Region Council authorized her appointment to the position at its May 24th meeting. It's expected that Halton Hills Council will follow suit at its May 29th meeting. Once official, her term will be from July 1st to December 31st, 2027 for both municipalities. The purpose of the Integrity Commissioner is to, in short, act as an authority that applies municipal codes of conduct governing the ethical behavior of council members. Wow. Yeah. Fun job. That would be a hard job for no, her. I, I wouldn't want that job. No, I wouldn't want it either. I, uh, yeah. I, to me, it's... No. No, thanks. This one's better. Much better. So... Yep. And it kills me because I was thinking of that while you were reading your story. When we started doing this, we've been doing this for what? Three years. Three years now. Yeah. Um, those were the stories that we thought we were bringing to, to light about Halton Hills, about town council, about what's going on in town. But as you were reading your story about the kidnapping and all this crap going on, th <laughs> this is not what we intended. <laughs> like, <laughs> we didn't think we were going down that rabbit hole. No, it's hole. supposed to be like, a beautiful community. No, yeah, yeah, like, community you know, and community. Uh, well, now we're helping them to let them know to be informed if you're not reading the newspaper. You know, I happening. would say Georgetown, between Georgetown and Acton, has gone from zero to 60 in one year. Like you yeah, would oh, yeah. I'd say two years. Two, yeah. yeah, the last couple of years. It's, it's amped it's, up, but it, it, yeah. it's, been, it, it's been going on since You know, and, and, and it's funny because when we started doing the show, transportation was a big topic at the time, and they mm -hmm. were talking about busing, oh, busing and, and stuff like huge. that. Huge. And we, did, we talked about it many, many times, and people were so worried that... By bringing that transportation in, um, uh, we were going to have all these problems. Well, guess what? They're here, and we don't have transportation. Yep. So your argument is now moot, and we do need better transportation in Georgetown. That's, that is a serious issue, and I do agree that they need to start looking at, if nothing else, a shuttle bus that runs from Georgetown south to Georgetown north downtown whatever and i think and, yep. and out to milton i think is one oh, of, that is too another as well yes. well milton now goes to the um to the outlet mall there their busing system goes there so, so that sure can we be can get to that, that point if then. you can get them yeah. to that point then you've and got then a they junction. can transfer yeah, and exactly yes. you can do a transfer it's sort of like the square one tra pretty transfer much. pretty much yeah you know and that's a, that's a really simple solution for a lot of people so something to talk to you know people go to town council and talk to them but those are the stories. That's where I was going with this that we were hoping to bring to you, but uh, unfortunately, well, we still do. It's we just, still do. They're kind of clouded. Yeah, they're yeah. kind of clouded. So here's a, here's another one. Speaking of it, yeah. Halton Regional Police are investigating after a woman's wallet was stolen at the Acton Sobies. Right out of the purse. Yeah, <laughs> on, May, on May 24th, around 3:45 p.m., police say the woman was approached by a female suspect in the parking lot. The suspect distracted the victim by stating there was a nail in her tire, uh, said the media relations officer, Steve Elms. At the time, the suspect removed the victim's wallet from her purse, which was on the front passenger seat. Police say the woman did not notice her wallet was missing until she arrived home, and by then her bank cards had already been used to make fraudulent purchases in Guelph. That was really quick. Wow. Um, the suspect's described well, as, <laughs> as an Asian woman, 20 to 30 years old. And anyone with information, you can contact Halton Regional Police at 905-825-4777. Or you can also do it at crimestoppers.ca anonymously. 
and uh, yeah, these distraction ones are getting really popular, and they're not just here; they're they're happening they're everywhere. Everywhere. Yep. Um, yeah, ladies, keep your purse close to you, zipped up. See, I don't I don't bring a purse with me anywhere. It's in my car, locked in the back. And when I go into a store, I make sure I have my car. I'll even just tuck it in the back of my pants so I don't have pockets. Yeah. Yep. I do not. I will not. Yeah. Will not take that chance. Yeah, I don't even carry a wallet myself anymore. So. Nope. I Don't carry the it. three main cards I need, my driver's license, my, phone? My, 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 That's it. my bank card, and, and my health card. That's all I need. Yep. So. No, it's crazy. Two Halton Ambulance is no longer in service. We'll soon have a new way of helping local residents, residences, or residents. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'll try that again. Halton Region has donated the decommissioned ambulances to the local branch of St. John Ambulance Canada. Oh, right on. The vehicles will be used by their volunteers who attend numerous events in the community to provide medical support for residences. Absolutely. A residence. I did it again. Oh, my goodness. I'm tired. On behalf of the region, I am proud to donate these vehicles to St. John Ambulance Canada, said Halton Regional Chair Gary Carr. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you, Excellent. guys. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's needed. Because at St. John's, you know, there are all these events, whether it's Rib Fest, Fair, um, the, the Beer Festival, all that stuff. The, they're the ones on board. Uh, they're, you know, help, helping people when they're drunk and falling down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's not that. just injuries, you mean? Oh, oh right, right, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Spaghetti dinner and trivia night. May 27th at 5.30 p.m. at Bethel Church, Acton. Enjoy a fun night of spaghetti, desserts, and trivia while fundraising to bring adult educational and skills development to rural Zambia. Beautiful. Dinner is by donation and desserts will be auctioned off. Awesome. Wonderful. Absolutely. Oh, God, yeah. And tri These the, countries the, need this stuff. The they trivia do. night's fun because it gets you out of the thinking about all the crap and going on in the and world. And you learn. And, and, and you well, learn you didn't stuff. already know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's 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 fun. It's interesting. I, I've always played the trivia games, and it's a Me lot too. of fun. So, uh, Canadian songs, Canadian singers. May 27th at 7 p.m., St. John's United Church in Georgetown. Join the... Uh, Canada Women's Choir in the evening of Canadian songs. The audience will also get a chance to join in the singing of songs from Gordon Lightfoot, the Bare Naked Ladies, Joni Mitchell, Neil Young, and more. Wine and light refreshments will be available. Tickets cost $15 for students under 18 and $20 for adults. And uh, that sounds like fun. You know what? I, you go to a night like that and when you start singing the songs, you don't realize how many of them are Canadian songs. And you go, mm -hmm. wow, these will be like, so yeah, a fun, fun time, especially the amount of Canadian singers, you know, you think of Anne Murray and Ian Thomas and all these people are Canadian that have written hundreds of songs. David Foster, yeah. you know, Brian Adams, we've just, Colin James, we, we've had an amazing... Well, you keep going Gord Downey. Yeah. yeah, the hip, the <laughs> Celine Dion, you know, uh, all that stuff. And, so and speaking of uh, female, si female singers, uh, Tina Turner. Yes. Oh. The Queen of Rock. It came up. A legend. Soon, I, I saw it one minute after it was posted that she had passed. And I, yeah. Same. I had to take a minute and breathe yeah. and then yeah. post it for our you page. Know. But, yeah. And, uh, that had to happen eventually. But yeah. Thank you for the music, sweetheart. And uh, See you on the other side. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. You should so play the, drums the, with the, her. The, there the you the go. The Queen of Rock, baby. <laughs> yeah, a true legend in her own right. Downtown Acton Historic Walking Tour. So this Sunday, May 28th at 7 p.m. in downtown Acton, join Scott Brooks of Vintage Acton as he does a tour of Main Street North, which has seen a number of changes since the early early days of the town. Meet at the Parkette at the corner of Mill and, and Main Streets. Um, admission by is by donation, um, cash, or even by e-transfer. Absolutely, and Scott, uh, Scott was an intern with Halton Hits and went on to I you uh, do great things in FM radio out in BC. And uh, he moved back home. And this kid knows everything about this town. He's a young guy, I but you he, saying that. he yeah. is a, he is in, engaged himself so much in the history of, of Acton. Uh, I, I recommend it. Take the tour. It, he'll show you some stuff that you, especially people that have only lived here for let's say even 20 years. He's going to show you stuff you didn't even know. So, 
during the tour. Oh, I bet you there's stuff even from us that were born and raised here. You Absolutely. know, we know a lot, but there's yeah. still stuff comes up sometimes, yeah. and I go, really, really? Yeah. Oh wow, that's <laughs> yeah. cool. Especially here in Acton. <laughs> Acton was a very historic town uh, in the 50s and 60s, especially uh, because it 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 was a town that was because at that time it was Highway 25 and Highway 7. Mm -hmm. These were highways. These were major highways. So as a thoroughfare town. Um, it became very popular. The the um, the tannery was huge. Uh, of course, everybody knows it's worth the drive to Acton with the Hyde House uh, in the uh, late seventies and eighties uh, and nineties even. And um, you know, it's it's been a it's got a quite a history here. And uh, you know, Scott just he just engages himself so strong into it. And you'll learn stuff. I absolutely guarantee you, guarantee you. So check it out. So I guess that wraps. It's 34, almost 35 minutes. There so I'd go. say we're, uh, we're right getting, on time. Yeah. We're getting good at this. So. Yes. But once again, we want to uh, say hi to our sponsor, Max Tires in Georgetown, 61 Wall Street, uh, right across basically from the high school. And it's 905-873-9255. And don't you forget it. And yeah, we've had fun. It's, it's always a great, I, a great show to bring it to you guys. And another one of our sponsors too is Silver Creek gas station absolutely yes, yes. uh glenn and 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 the guys over there yeah absolutely stop in there great service great uh, mechanical service as well and uh we want to say a big hi out to silver creek gas station so they're uh, family to me so. uh, absolutely <laughs> well even my buddy kevin works there as well i've known yeah. kevin since we were in, in middle school and uh you know it's a great family business it's so. been there over 50 years yeah as yeah, well right you know, so, yeah. so it's been there quite some time know, hi to the guys at silver creek then so for sure and we just want to say thanks to everybody for tuning in viewing us every week uh you know like leah said earlier in the show we've been on here for three years we're growing each week and uh we want to thank you guys it's it's awesome bringing you your local news sometimes a little uh sketchy yes uh, for a lack of better words beyond our control I yes, might. yes yes that's a good way of putting that too so uh but we hope you have a great weekend and we hope to get some videos tonight from lee's garage we'll see what's going on and uh yeah i guess i gotta do that right i keep forgetting you're not used to that that's usually big daddy's job that's right yes. so uh again big daddy we miss your brother get better everybody have yourselves a great week be safe out there and we'll catch everybody on the b side have a great week Got some community can be driven, driven by community you navigate we drive, we drive. be safe Good everybody <laughs> it's only because it came up in front of her face <laughs>